Okay. So we were going to spend this video um, making edits for the to-do list. So let's get right into that. I'm going to do this from a bit of a cold start probably because I haven't really identified how I want to do it. But I already have the ability to change the image. So we're not going to mess with that. I think what we're going to do is put a container on this page. And we are going to put these items in the container. I'm going to move my button down below. OK. And the reason I did that is I think I'm just going to do a um, hide of these items in their container when we hit an edit button. So let's go ahead and take a look at what that's going to be like. So this is going to, we're going to name it so we can keep track of it. This is the to do view container. And that is visible. And we're going to create a page variable. The reason I'm going to go down this path is I'm going to have another container right here. And if I name it, you'll kind of know where I'm heading with it. This will be to do edit container. OK. So we're only going to show one of these at a time, which means we want a page variable that is, let's call it view mode. I've used that before, haven't I? And by default, view mode has an, oh, glad I looked at that. I want it to be a true false. And by default, it's going to be true because we're going to enter into the screen by default in view mode, which means if I come to the to do view container, I want to go into the advanced properties and I want to go pick a page variable that is the one we just created. That preview value, yeah, that doesn't matter as much. The initial value matters. And then I want to come down to this one, advanced properties, and I want to pick the same page variable. But what we're going to do is go into a formula, which I didn't do. There we go. And the reason I'm doing that is for the page variable view mode, we want to give it a not condition. So the that exclamation point just means make it the opposite of what it is. And so that means when it is view mode true, that means this will be visible false. And then when we click on an ed edit button we haven't added yet, um, view mode will be false, and this negates that and makes it true, so this will show up. So now what I need is a couple of input fields, because that, drop that in there, and I'll duplicate it. <laughs> I deleted it. Silly me. Let me save. Put that in there. Hit the real duplicate button. OK. So we're working in the to-do edit container, and we've got the two input fields. Wonder if we can just eliminate these labels so that that looks more like this. And then we're going to go, why don't we, I was going to say we're going to go guess. Why would we guess what the font size is? It's a 28 which is font size H2. So this one needs to be, oh yeah, we don't really get to control that. We will just make them edit fields. And we have a placeholder to do name, to do description. If you were to ever delete completely, you'd know which one's name and which one's description. So if we look at wash the dog, that is to do underscore detail dot name. 
So we want to make this one the same. Um, where is that? Is that in here? There it is. To do underscore detail name. That is image name. That's not what I want. I need to scroll down further. There we go. There's name. Then we'll do the description. There we go. So that should give us what we need to edit, except for I need to put a little edit icon somewhere. So why don't we put that in this to do view container? If I put that in there, we're going to change it to be a pencil. The universal edit sign. And then we'll come in here and we will figure out where we want that thing positioned. I wonder if I can get this to go right. That is not what I want to do. Okay. Always simple little things that I draw a blank on when I'm on the video. It'll be none of those. So I need to make this icon smaller because we're at, let's do about 50. And actually, let's do about 45 pixels, but then let's make this a little bit bigger font size. Large. Seems a little big, doesn't it? Medium. And yeah, let's go with large for now. And let's go with medium. I'll be indecisive. And then let's go with the informative color. And then you know what my problem is? <laughs> One of many. In the container, I need another container. Let me explain why. Because I'm sitting here struggling with how do I get this thing? There's container. Put the icon in it. And that means that I can now do my layout adjustments. If you ever get um, completely confused on how do I get something to go to the right, um, and you're just using the element itself like I was just doing, you won't be able to do that effectively. What you do need to do is put the item into a container, and then you can tell the container that you want it to be to the right. So you can do that sort of placement when you have things in a container. So that little um, gaff on my part was just forgetting that I needed to have its own separate container. Okay, let's go ahead and name this so that I don't get too many confusing things in here. And this is edit icon container. And so now when I click on the edit icon, I want to set the page variable. If you remember, we created the page variable for view mode. And so when I click on it, I want to set it to false because we will no longer be in view mode. And then we need to do a little bit more complicated effort in the um, edit container. Maybe we'll take it one step at a time, but I'll explain it. We need to have two options in the edit container. Put this right here. And the reason we need two options, and I'm going to do a row in the container, is because I need to be able to cancel and I need to be able to save. And so what I want to do, I wonder if there's a good, I'd like to just keep these both icons. I mean, we can do a check mark. Yeah, we can do a check mark there. That seems reasonable. And then go to the style. 
open the cell layout and I want it to go to the right. And then let's see what else we want there. I'm going to go ahead and put, oh, that's interesting. I'm not going to mess with that yet. I do want the padding, that's why, not margin. I want to move this out from the edge a little bit so it's easier to click on. Let's do 24. And now we'll go change that color in a sec. I want to do the same thing here. And I want to go to the row. And we'll go to padding. We'll go 24 there. So we've moved both of those in 24. And now we can go back and style each one of them. We'll leave the size as it is. That seems pretty reasonable. We will come down and look at that right on color informative. We're going to do the same for this one. Sometimes it's all this little minor stuff that chews up so much time. Okay. So now within the new, the edit, sorry, not new, in the edit container, I have both of these icons. This one is just going to set a page variable. Back to true. Because we're just closing it without doing anything else. And then this one will actually do the um, save. And so we'll get to that in a bit, but that will be a create record. I could probably do the update record, but this has been the habit I've had is using the post capability in Xano. Okay. So we've got the, the guts of it there. Let's see what it looks like if we run it. It's definitely not functional yet. Let me get my uh, screen sharing back up here. There's my dance app or parts of it that I was testing in. So let's come back into the to-do list. And let's see if we at least have the toggling between edit and non-edit working. And then I'll let you know one of the complexities of doing an edit in place like this, as it thinks. OK. Try that one more time. See if we can actually get data back and show you what it's doing. Not looking promising. OK. I will pause and uh, see what's going bump, and we'll come back online here in a sec. I think I'm going to end up with more pause time on this video than I have actually recording time. Uh, the good news is that the ticket that I had opened out on the forum about modals opening left, closing right, instead of opening up, closing down, uh, John out on the forum quickly responded and mentioned that in an upcoming emulator release, 253, I believe it is, which is currently in beta, that they have that fixed. So that's good news. Um, it's the right thing to leave the menus as they were. So good to know. You can find that out on the forum. But we were in process of showing, do a screen share again showing that our edit and cancel button were working. And so I did get that going again, which was the whole reason I paused. So if I go in here, there is the edit button. And if I click on that, you'll see that it switches over to the edit fields. And then I can cancel and we'll go back. But I decided that that looks kind of bad. It's a quick little test to make sure it works, but I wanted to more seamlessly pop into this, meaning where I had headed before was to make this font bigger. 
but this is actually a composite piece, which you can tell because I double click on it and it goes into the composite editor. And we don't need that. It's the one with the label and everything. So I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna go with the primitive. So down at the bottom, you always have to extend it. Um, you don't even really see it's there. We're just gonna go with a standard, let's see what we got here, to view, see if we get in the right spot. I want that to be in the edit container. There we go, almost. Okay, so I want just the standard edit capability and we'll duplicate that. And then also what we want is to make it look like this. So the goal is you click on edit and the only thing you notice is that there's a cursor and nothing else really changes. So the closest we can get to that would be to make the font size, I believe it's an H2. And then the weight we want to have be semi-bold as opposed to normal. The line height, which I believe is after the font section here, to make that an H2. And then we're gonna do the same below here. So we want it to be the same as the description. So it looks like we've got a normal weight, a 16. So we've got font size paragraph. Oops, and then line height paragraph. So I wanna change this to be, okay, it's that by default. So we might be close. Um, I also don't want that to be a star. I want that to be some sort of, oops, I want to come out to the icons here and have some sort of close. There we go. Has more of a meaning of cancel. So let's go back out to the app and see if we're getting a little closer to making this look nice. So post a new to do. Oh yeah, that won't work. Obviously we don't want to eliminate the data. I have to, since I put in new edit fields, I have to grab the data of the to-do detail, scroll quickly to the bottom and save. And then also for this one, data variable, data variable, to-do detail, scroll to the bottom, pick description, and let's see if we get a little bit better outcome on that. I'm gonna go ahead and go back in and click there. So if you notice, we have ever so slight of a movement and that's probably mainly because we have bottom orders. Let's take a quick look and see if for the borders I can eliminate to custom and I'll do none. Let's try the same thing here. Let's see if by getting rid of the borders I can get a little bit closer match. See if we can get back in here real quick. I did not get rid of the borders. Give one more try on that. Let's see. Border style, none. But no radius. I want no color. Get rid of all of these things. Make it completely transparent. And let's see if that gets us a little bit closer. 
I'd probably be okay with uh, with a little bit of a shift. We can worry about that later, either as homework for you guys, or I'll mess with it and let you know what I did. But minimally, we'll see if we can't get rid of the bottom borders because that's a little bit more than what we need. If we can't get this thing to pay attention to us here. Okay, if it's going to be stubborn, what I might do as opposed to worrying about it at the moment is we're just going to continue on because there's some other key aspects here that I want to share. Um, what we're doing is using the data variable of to do detail that we get the record from, as you can see here, which means um, I'm actually changing the original detail when I go into edit. And the reason I mentioned that is when I cancel, if you type something into this field and then cancel, it'll still have that data because we're two-way bound to the original data to do detail. So what you do in an edit situation like this is when you go into edit, you need to, sorry, when you go into edit here, You not only need to set the view mode, but I also want to set a data record. Meaning that I want to duplicate, I want to save off in a temporary record. And let me show you how I do that. So that I get the schema right, I usually come in here and I create a new to do. And it's going to be new data record. And then I will do save. And the reason I do that is if I mimic after a to-do data resource, then it has all of the properties already assigned. So the to-do save, and then what I want to do is go back out here. And when I hit the edit, I want to set a data record. Keep searching and searching. There we go. I want to set a get rid of this one. Set the data variable. And I want to set the to do save with data variable. There it is with the to-do detail. So now I have a duplicate of the record we got back from Xano in the save record. And the reason I'm doing that is when we hit cancel, I want to save, take the to-do save and move it back into the detail. So I get the original values again. So I'm just creating a temp variable and there's a special way we do this, which is a formula. So let's see if we can get this right. So here I'm canceling, right? I'm in the cancel. I changed the view mode. And now I want to click on set data value. And I want the to do detail to be reset. And I'm going to do that with a formula. I may not need to. I may just be able to do the data value. There we go. Not make it harder than we need to. So I just move it back in. Okay. So let's go back over to our application and see if we have this working. The thing I don't have working yet is I haven't written it back out to Xano. But one thing at a time, I want to make sure that the save and the restore on the cancel work. Okay. So if I edit and I do this, then when I cancel, it should go back to the original. There you go. So that seems really obvious once you've done it. But the first few times I did this, when I canceled, I hadn't done that, and I ended up overriding the data. And so now all we have to do is on the check mark, when we click that, 
I just need to write out to Xando. So we've got the check mark, we've got the create record. Um, to do is what we want. The authorization is in the app variables, the auth token. And then I want to use the uh, data variable that the screen is attached to. And actually, I think I might be wrong on this. I think I might be passing too much data back in the wrong structure. So let's confirm that. Let's go out to our data and our to-dos. We're gonna do the create record post. And we have custom values. Name and description is all I need going back. And so let's make sure, cause it's this one. So I'll have an ID that I need to specify. I need to do some setup here that I haven't done is what it comes to. Um, because we're needing to pass back a URL placeholder of ID, and then it's and that's here, and then it wants name and description, and then it will edit the record with that ID, and then I need to do the created by, I don't need to do that, so I'm gonna hide it, and then the media ID, I'm not changing anything with that on this either. Okay. So that's what this looks like. So I completely had forgotten that we hadn't done anything with this post to do ID. Let's see what else we have in here that we have. Okay. So we're gonna stick with this. We need to test this from this side first as well. So let's get this set up and prepared before I get ahead of myself. We will pick ID number one and we'll change it to something other than wash the dog and make sure that everything works. Okay. ID number one. Wash the cat. And good luck with that. If I run it and come back out to the database. There we go. Okay. As you would expect, that worked. There's, uh, let's see what else we have here. Okay, so that's all good for the moment. Now let's go back and grab our endpoint URL and come back out here to create record and config. And we do need the ID as a URL placeholder. And this is to do ID, and the key is ID. Um, probably actually a number even on the API. It's not static. Okay, I'm gonna save this and it's gonna take me back to base and I'll click back on create record. Let's go ahead and test. Okay, so I need to go get my authorization. We'll put the bearer here for now in a space. The to-do ID, we're gonna use one. And then this will be the payload that's sent. Wash the gerbil. Be careful, P is small. Okay, so all I need now is to go get my auth token. And if I do the run and debug, it'll be here. Double click. I'll get the whole token. There we go. I should be able to run a test. And that worked correctly. We'll just confirm back in the database. 
Okay, now we're watching, washing the gerbil. Okay, so that successfully ran. I'm gonna set the schema. And now, okay, wow, I was way ahead of myself on that one. Now I have everything that I need because I've set up the create record underneath the to-do data resource that I had. Now it expects a description and a name, and then it returns back all of this info, which I'm less interested in. I'm mainly interested in making the update to it. Let's get rid of the data. Green. Come back here. Um, there's a few things I want to do because I've made some changes. So remember, we have the data variable. I created this to do save variable ahead of actually making those schema changes. So I'm a little concerned that I'm not going to match up. So here we have an ID and an authorization. That's to get. And here I have a new data record. I'm going to delete this one and add it back in just to be sure that it picks up the correct schema, if it's going to pick one up at all. And then we want that to be to do save. And we'll make sure that that's set everywhere it needs to be. Okay, so I have that back, and I did that when I did the edit. I set a page variable and a to-do save. We have that. Okay. And then on here, we have the to-do details. And I have the to-do save. That's great. And then we wanted to do a the create record of to do, the authorization, the to do ID. We want to pick that off the data variables, the to do detail. And I want to go down to the bottom and pick the ID. If you pick the ID that's up above, just you need to pay attention to the fact that that's media. So that's image related here. And so all that indented stuff is image. And then this is back to the to-do. And that's why I'm picking it up down here. Okay. And then I have record properties, which I want to use to do detail. I think that does it. I feel like I'm missing something, but I always do, don't I? Um, so create record. Now I want to know, let's throw these in here for now so I know what happens. I'll either be successful or I won't. Success. Failure. Okay. Let's go see what we got working here. That's like everything. Okay, post a new to-do. I'm gonna go into edit. I am gonna post a new car. Post a new to-do as a car. There we go. And I'm gonna submit. Did I not attach that? Okay. Let's come back over here. Where, and I'm not going to refresh the screen yet because I want to see where my post is. So it's number 44 that I should be messing with. There it is. It's working. So I updated it. That just means that it isn't showing my toast which isn't all bad because I don't want to keep those anyway. Um, but in good fashion, I know I have an app variable for a toast position. I would like to at least see them because sometimes I feel like I've got other problems going on with the app. If some of the simple stuff like just showing a toast message doesn't work. Um, and then definitely we need to close back out um close this we've saved it 
come back over here and relaunch it. And it's going to make us wait. So while we're waiting, I am going to come back over here. And when we have successfully done this, I want to set the uh, age variable off of success. We want to set the view mode back to true. Okay, sign value view mode true. And that should switch it from edit to view um, with just a little bit of a flicker. Okay, so let's go back into the app. Go into post a new car. Edit. Just so we know something changed, we're going to post a new motorcycle. And then click success. Okay, so before the toast was probably below the keyboard. So if you notice now, when I go back, it refreshes there as well. So we definitely have done the update. And we can refresh here. If you watch online or item number 44, there we go. Okay. Yay, I guess I can smile on that one. I think we're getting it somewhere nice. Um, and if I close, I can get rid of my close button, can't I? Because I now have a back button. Didn't like that big close button anyway, so let's get rid of that. So now we have the ability to edit. Um, the key aspects of that edit were the view and edit mode, and the other key aspect was the fact that data variables has a save option so we can save off. And I should prove that still works because I forgot to prove that. But the idea that um, if I go into a to-do and edit, and then I get rid of the parts of it and cancel there, it replaces it. It doesn't do any damage and it puts the data back. You know, the other thing that's probably worth doing because it would make it more usable is on the new, when I click edit, I would also like to set focus. And there is a flow function that lets me do that, focus input, that we're going to install. And that will get installed down here. There it is. Took me right to it. That's kind of nice. I think that might be new too. Um, so while I'm saving off the variable, I'm going to do it at the same time. There's no reason to put it in line. And I want it to be putting focus on that input. I should name those. Let's see here. To do name input and to do description input in case I need to see those a little more clearly. Okay, so when I hit edit, like I was saying, I want to put focus on a specific component, which it already, and I want to pick, oh, it's good that I named it, I guess. Um, let's go finding to do name input. So let's see if we can get that working. I'm always taking a chance that it's going to make me wait, but this time it won't. So click. Okay, that's bad. It didn't work. We are going to save that for another time because I bet you this is another long video. So what we do have working, like I'd mentioned, is the ability to edit, cancel, save, and um, the ability to do that with just swapping and making them look alike. Uh, we may mess with that some more next time, but we actually have the to-do 
pretty functional. That's right. Pretty functional, but you can never cancel your, or you can never complete it. So we're going to come back next time and add a complete capability. Thanks again for hanging in there with me.